Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how you can use Java Swing to create basically radio buttons and a checkbox and more radio buttons that will represent the colors to basically draw a shape using the paint method and whether or not it's filled or not with a checkbox and then when you select some colors on radio button it'll be obviously that color shape. So I found this cool prompt from this book. They are doing it with Java FX. I will be doing it with Swing, so it doesn't matter. They're both like GUI stuff. So I'm just adding radio buttons for colors for this prompt because this one was kind of boring without. Like it was just so lame. So I added it. So I'm going to show you how to make it. So what I've done already is imported the abstract windows toolkit which is AWT for short. And here is my class tutorial or YouTube tutorials. And in the main method here, I'm just going to create a reference to my class. So since it's called tutorial, I will be calling it tutorial. And I'll just give it a T for short. Now I'm going to create my Java frame. So J frame frame equals new J frame. We'll say select shapes and we we'll probably have to import Java Swing. And again, make my life easier so I don't have to worry about going forward. I'll just throw it all in there with the asterisk. So then we have to do our default stuff. So frame dot set default close operation jframe dot exit on close very important to do that now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two panels um, I'm gonna have a panel for the buttons on the bottom and a panel for the colors on the side so J panel we'll call button panel for the first one equals new J panel and then we'll do another one for the color panel equals new J panel lovely so what we've done is we've created a reference to our class so we can use this later we've created a frame we've done the default close operation and now we've created two panels um, I'm, I'm gonna do a little title on the top just for fun. So if we go above here, we'll be able to create some like public de declaration variables basically. So right here in your class, gotta be in your class, we do public static so we can actually access it because it's being called outside of the main method. So public static J panel title and public static we're gonna have that checkbox that I was talking about so I'll call it checkbox and then I'm also going to need my radio buttons I'm gonna need one that's gonna create a circle a square and a triangle and what is wrong here? J checkbox. Nope, there's nothing wrong with that one. That is exactly how it's supposed to look. Oh, I forgot to capitalize the B. My bad. Alright, so. Public static J radio button. Yeah, sure, I could have done it all in one line, but it's nice to visualize it separately because I'm going to have a button for the color blue. I'm going to have a button for the color red, and so forth with green and yellow, and why not throw orange in there? What the heck? Could have done that all in one line, just would have been really long, so whatever. Um, I'm also going to have to do public static boolean check box is selected. Wait, actually, actually, um, you don't need that because there actually is a way to just do it 
with the checkbox itself. But yeah. And then I'm gonna create color my color. So this way we can know what color they've chosen based on the radio buttons that choose that color. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go back down into our main method and continue building our GUI application. So after we've created the two panels, I'm going to do a border, which you can do by calling the border class. I'll just call it a black line because it's really just going to be a black border. So then you call border factory dot create line border. And instead of null, you actually need to throw in whatever color you would like. And I'm just going to do black. So, boom, done. Got to import. And now we're good to go. Perfect. So now, if you noticed, I created a panel called title. So technically we have three panels, but one's up there, two are in the main method. So I'm just going to call my panel, and I want to set the border for said panel to the border I literally just made. So it's just going to have a nice black border, basically, is what's happening there. And so if we go down here... Just to uh, have this at the bottom, so we'll do frame dot add t because that is the reference to my class. Then I want to set visible to true, so we can actually see it because by default it is invisible. And then I will set actually let's do this first. Set size. Sounds good to me. And what I'll do here is f dot add. Well, actually, first we want to get the content pane. Content pane dot add. And we will be adding title. We'll do border border layout dot north because I want it all the way at the top. If you have not messed around with those layout managers, you definitely should. Which in fact we need to set that to be done. Where are we? So here's our panels. We'll keep it all in one area, keep it nice and neat. So title Um, I guess title equals new J panel would be good. I <laughs> need a space in between that. All right, so now that we've initialized, because this was just declared, now it's initialized. So now that makes sense. So we're going to have to set the border layout. So for my color panel, I want it to be a grid layout. So we'll do new grid layout. And I want to have five, one, which is basically, if you look at here, how many rows, how many columns. So five rows, one column. So grid layout will be the panel, but the actual layout of the frame itself is going to be a border layout. By default, that's what it is. Why is this yelling at me? Change T to component. No, I don't want to do that. Maybe we'll go way later. So we set the size, we added the thing, so we're all good there. What we need to do is add stuff to the panel. So if we go back up, right underneath here. So I created my border. I set the border for my title frame. I'm going to create a J label. 
called label equals new j label and by default as soon as we start up it's just going to be empty and I'm just going to say label dot set horizontal alignment to j label dot center now what I'm going to have to do is create a button group because a button group allows you to only select one button out of the said group because you don't want multiple of them selected at once because you can only draw one shape at a time and then I'm just going to create a second one for the color group that's going to be on the side granted button group my reference these variables could be better but it is what it is so in order to have buttons in a button group you need buttons so let's create those buttons so check box is going to equal new j check box and we want to let them know that this is the fill check box then circle equals new j radio button and this is a circle we can spell circle right that would be great so then we want square equals new j radio button square and triangle equals new j radio button triangle so we got the checkbox we got the three shapes but now we need all the colors that I've done so blue button equals new j radio button and we'll say blue and then red button equals new j radio button red and then we got the yellow one which equals new j radio button yellow I accidentally capitalized the U. Um, we have the orange button equals new J radio button orange. So we got blue, red, yellow. Oh, I forgot green. Okay, so green button equals new J radio button green. All right, looks good. So now we need to add action listeners because in order to do something when you click it, you need an action listener. So circle dot add action listener and we're just going to say T. Um, Extends canvas is going to be needed since we're going to be painting on a canvas. And now that we are using action listeners, we're going to have to implement action listener. And we'll have to import that. And then we'll have to add on implemented methods, which is the methods that's going to actually program our, uh, like, do this when clicked stuff. So, not now my error went away, <laughs> I was going to say. Um, so, we're going to have to do this for all of my buttons. So, square.addActionListener. I spelled square wrong. So, circle, square, triangle, and then my colors. So let's do blue, green, and 
yellow. Blue, green, yellow, orange, blue, red, yellow, green, orange. I, I think I got all the colors. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So, since we have our checkbox, right? Where is that checkbox? Oh, uh, where's our checkbox? Oh, okay, so checkbox right here, right? So J checkbox. We're going to have to... So what we're going to do here is we're going to go down here. After we've added our action listeners, we're going to create a listener. What's going on? Listener. So we're going to do our ch listener for our checkbox. So I'm going to call checkbox. And we're going to say add item listener. So not action listener, but item listener. This is how it works for checkboxes. So, so checkbox.add item listener. We're going to create a new item listener right here. And we're going to have to import item listener then we're going to, have to add our unimplemented methods again should sound familiar we did it down here so this is for the checkbox this is for the radio buttons that is the difference between those two so e is our variable for whatever source from we're getting clicked but since we only have one checkbox it's not really going to be that difficult so get state changed and we're going to see if it's equal to 1. Because if the state change is equal to 1, I want to set my label's text to say, fill the shape. What happened? I really hate when it does that. So, after that, I will do an else statement and it will just set the text to don't fill the shape. And that is it. Then I'm going to go down here and add my radio buttons to their group. Because right here we're adding to frame. So then we're going to add to button groups. So then we'll add to panels. So my original button group, we were going to add all the shapes. Boom. Now my second button group, that's where this happening. Uh, button group two dot add. Did I name it something else? Oh, whoops, that makes sense. Button group two dot add. Button group two, that's backwards. Um, let's see, we want orange, but group two dot add yellow, one, two, three, four. We are missing one last one, which is green. Let's go grab our green. Boom. All right, so we add the buttons to the button groups. Now, back in our frame, we've only added title. So if we run this, the only thing that's going to show up right now Oh, oh, because we didn't. Okay, yeah, we have more to do. Uh, so right now we gotta go on and add to our panels. So color 
panel dot add red button color panel dot add yellow button color panel dot add green button color panel dot add orange color panel dot add do we do blue one two three four five all right done but our button panel our button panel we need to add our circle button panel dot add our square and button panel dot add our triangle and then button panel dot add our checkbox otherwise we'll never see it and title dot add label that makes way more sense all right, so we'll run this. Oh, we still have an error. Oh, that's, I didn't mean to do no. Let's do 500, 500. All right, so here is our first panel right there. And that's all we should see because we didn't actually add the other ones to the frame yet. But that's that border that you can tell. So frame.get content pane dot add button panel and I want to do it south border layout dot south and then f dot get content pane dot add and we will do our color panel this time and I want to set this east so if I run this we should be able to see everybody now so we got my color red. See, you can only select one at a time. That's because of the button group. And obviously, if I click this, fill the shape, don't fill the shape, fill the shape, don't fill the shape from our item listener here. So back down on action performed, when we click a button, we got to program whether or not the colors were selected. So if get source is equivalent to the red button we want to set the my color variable we created before to be color dot red you don't have to do capitals I just like it that way so do this again all right so basically that's all the colors now what we have to do is actually make our paint method. So that's what's actually going to draw on our canvas. So since we extended canvas all the way at the top, this will be no problem. But what you can't do is create this method inside your main method. That's not going to make sense. So you have to call this paint. So public void paint. Not paints, not painted, not painty, paint. It has to be paint. And you got to take in a graphics. So, we'll just call it graphics G. So G is going to be our reference. So I want the color to be set to whatever color they selected. And we just program that, so we're good to go on that point. So now I'm going to create an if statement that's going to say if circle is selected, then we want to draw a circle. 
but we have to also make sure do we need to draw a filled circle. So if why is caps lock on? If check box dot is selected. Why does this do this to me? Then we want to draw a filled oval because that is the method for it. So I'm just going to do 10, 10, 60, and 60. Now, since we're crawling paint and we want to repaint every time this is happening, down at the button, once we're done with all our if statements, we'll just call the repaint method, which will just repaint our method. So every time we click something, it'll know to run all of this code all over again so we can update on the screen, whether it's a square or a filled square or a red square, you know, all that stuff. So that's how that's going to work. All right, so I did notice I made a mistake. Uh, I accidentally forgot the two down here. So, uh, but basically, so you didn't have to watch me program at all. I just programmed how big I want my circle, where I want it on the canvas, and the same thing for square and triangle. The only difference is there's a nested if statement that's saying, "Hey, is the checkbox selected?" Oh, if it is, then we want to fill it. Otherwise, we just want to draw one that's not filled. And that's it for the same thing. So you run the program. And then what it has is, okay, do you want it filled? Fill the shape. Don't want it filled? Don't fill the shape. Fill the shape. Okay, do I want blue? Okay, well, what shape do I want? Hmm, circle. Okay, do I want it not filled? Oh, okay, cool. Orange, green, yellow, red. Filled, blue, orange, green, yellow, red, square, orange, green, yellow, red. See, my triangle is kind of tiny, but that's just the dimensions I gave it. And that's the whole program. So questions, comments, concerns down below. And if you have any video suggestions on tutorials you would like, by all means, also, you can do it right down there.